<laughs> no, but perfume does have a connection to genomics, believe it or not, as well as many other industrially interesting compounds. The reason why some perfumes are so expensive isn't just because they're that brand name Hugo Boss or Gucci. It's actually because the smell stays on your skin longer due to a perfume fixative called ambergris. For instance, when a sperm whale eats something sharp, such as shells, it secretes the sticky mucus to protect its stomach from being cut or otherwise injured. Then, similar to a cat in a fur ball, in order to expel these materials, the whale vomits into the ocean where this sticky mucus undergoes a chemical reaction caused by salt from the sea, oxygen, sunlight that turns it into a hard, waxy rock. While these rocks wash up on shore, people collect them, sell them to fragrance companies who extract the ambergris. So as you can imagine, this is a unreliable source and very expensive source. So if you happen to stumble across them, whale vomit, collect it. Researchers in my lab have recently discovered an ambergris precursor compound in balsam fir trees. Even though you're not killing any whales, you're still using endangered species products, so you want to move away from that. So this compound in the tree isn't actually the same compound that is in the whale barf, but it's a precursor to that compound. Being from Vancouver, um, I actually haven't seen any of these trees. I work on the molecular biology side of it. So I'm currently cloning the DNA that's responsible for making this compound out of the balsam fir tree and moving it into baker's yeast. It's sort of like a molecular cut and paste project. So the idea here is that you can now grow the compound within yeast. You can also make this compound synthetically in a test tube. However, it only has a 33% yield. So picture this, you're putting in all these compounds, you're only getting 33% of the product. Therefore, I'm using uh, natural sources and natural enzymes to do the job that we can't seem to do.